Welcome back. Today we are aboard the Nautilus. For those of you who might not be familiar with the Nautilus, it is the fictional submarine that Captain Nemo was in command of in the story 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, written by Jules Verne in 1870. And it incorporates some of the earliest forms of diving equipment and underwater technologies that were just up and coming at the time. Now, a lot of people consider Jules Verne the father of scientific fiction or sci-fi writing, but in reality, Jules Verne was actually writing about up-and-coming sciences and technologies in the mid-1800s, which was really cool because no one else was doing that at the time. And some of those technologies he incorporated into his story, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea one of which is the transatlantic cable. And the transatlantic cable was attempted three different times. The first two attempts failed, and it connected North America with Europe for the first time to send telegrams. And it consisted of huge lines of cable that were strewn across the North Atlantic, and then the communication could run between the two. Now, in 1858, the second attempt would only end up lasting for three weeks, which was still impressive at the time. And after it failed, the jewelry company, Tiffany & Co., actually bought segments of the cable and cut them into four-inch little pieces that they sold for 50 cents each. It seems like a bargain, but 50 cents wasn't, you know, wasn't a amount of money to shy away from back then. And we are fortunate enough to actually have one of those on display here in our 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea exhibit. It's one of my personal favorite um, pieces because it has such a unique story to it. And you can see from the images, and this is what it looks like as it's on display, and here are some close-ups of it as well, that it is made up of different layers of the fiber optic cables that would have been used to transmit the messages between Nova Scotia and Ireland and then distributed from there. Pretty interesting technologies. And the way Jules Verne found out about it was in 1867, he was on a passenger ship coming over to North America from Europe and he was speaking with some of the crew who had happened to be on that very ship the year previous and they were part of laying the cable across the North Atlantic. And so Jules Verne thought this is pretty cool. I'm going to incorporate it into my next book. And in the story, the Nautilus actually goes past the transatlantic cable. So it's mentioned within the story. Another technology that plays a large part in 20,000 Leagues is the invention of diving apparatus suits. And Verne also got that as a inspiration from, a, from some of his fellow countrymen, Roy Coriel, Roy Quayrol, and Dena Roos. I apologize for my pr French pronunciation of that. I'm not very good at French. But they were some of the earliest pioneers of actually having backpack regulators. And that's what we have on display behind me here is an example of what those looked like. Jules Verne used that as inspiration for the equipment that Captain Nemo and his crew would go on exploration and expeditions with in the story. Not only was Jules Verne interested in underwater technologies, a few decades later in 1915, the Williamson brothers would start dabbling in underwater film. And they did this by borrowing their father's contraption that they would later call the Williamson tube. And what it was was a long metal tube that extended beneath the surface. And at the bottom was a circular kind of space where the workers could sit inside, or in this case, the film crew. And they outfitted it with a large window so they could have their cameras set up and film divers underwater. So in 1916, they went to the Bahamas with their, their whole dive crew and made the first underwater feature film, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's black and white and silent. These are some clips from it, just a little bit. We have all of the underwater ones on film here at the museum. And they would use this technology for other movies over time. 
But it's neat to see how even decades later, after Jules Verne was adopting new underwater technologies, that these gentlemen adopted and created underwater technologies to continue on Jules Verne's stories, which is pretty neat. Another more modern piece of equipment we have in this exhibit was made by Pat Reagan in 2003. And this is a working model of Captain Nemo's helmet from the 1954 Disney version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And it was, it would be able to work underwater completely, which is pretty cool. And we have it here on display. So as you can see, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea continues to play a part in our culture of movies and books, even today. And I actually am reading it for the first time. It's been my go-to outdoor book. And with all this time on our hands, I highly recommend you check it out. And it's quite impressive the way Jules Verne tied in all of the different technologies, all the scientific names of all these creatures, and made it into an enjoyable story for everyone to read. I hope you enjoyed this video today. We'll be back next week with another one for you. Don't forget to leave any comments or if you have any questions, let us know. And I'll be back at you guys next time. See you later.